Hi, my name is Randy Eggert, and this is for the class Bad Words and Taboo Terms. In this video, we'll be looking at swearing and the brain, where it happens, and why it happens. So we'll start with the evolutionary purpose of swearing, and the first thing that we need to understand is that swear words, more than most words, are connected with the right hemisphere. So in a previous video, we looked at the left, left hemisphere and language in general. And what we found is that the language center for humans is there on the left hemisphere. And that when it gets damaged, people lose the ability to speak, except for swearing. That most people, even when they have global aphasia, where all of that left hemisphere language ability has been destroyed, they're still able to swear, which suggests that something must be going on here in the right hemisphere as well. Another thing we have to understand is that swearing is closely associated with the limbic system, the emotional brain. And we'll be focusing on the limbic system in this video. So the limbic system looks like this. It's the so-called mammalian brain, right? It's an older evolutionary part of the brain. And let me switch to this cool website, three, the 3D Brain. Um, I've talked about this before in a previous video. You can get apps for this on your phone and on your tablets. It's really cool. And let me just spin this around so you can see it. So the first of all, we can see the different parts of the uh, limbic system. So the amygdala, which we'll be talking about more as we go. You've got the cingulate gyrus. You've got the epithalamus, the hippocampus. And if we spin it around like this, you see that it's symmetrical in the brain. And you see that this is deeper in the brain than the cortex. So the cortex, that's the higher thinking part of the brain. This is what makes humans so much more intelligent than other animals. And this cortex, and let me spin it around so you're looking at the left hemisphere, this cortex is where you're going to find the uh, language center. So the uh, Broca's area and the Veronica's area is going to be found in the cortex, whereas deeper in the brain is the limbic system. All right, let me go back now and we'll continue on. So Prebrum, 1960, introduced this idea that the limbic system is responsible for the four Fs of survival. And he listed the four Fs which I expect that you probably could guess on your own. There's feeding, there's fleeing, there's fighting, and then the fourth F is, of course, sex. Well, that's obviously not an F word, and Prebrum obviously had a sense of humor. He was thinking of a nice Anglo-Saxon F word, namely fucking. Now, some biologists with less of a sense of humor have said that the fourth F was fornicating, but that's clearly not the F that Prebrum had in mind because he's looking for that nice, clean rhythm of feeding, fleeing, fighting, fucking, not feeding, fleeing, fighting, fornicating, right? And certainly not sex, even though that's what he wrote in his 1960 paper. Swearing apparently triggers a fight. <laughs> or flight response. The evolutionary purpose of swearing also is such that the fight or flight response prepares us for danger. So when you hear swearing, you get prepared for danger. And that's probably a good thing because people tend to swear when something scary is happening or something like they've spilled something important. That might be something that you need to jump up and save your papers. Um, you know, there's all sorts of reasons that we swear uh, for various kinds of danger and that swearing gets us prepped for it. 
There's also some argument that it, uh, that's why coaches use it in sporting events, is to get their athletes psyched up for the race or the match or the game, whatever it is, and that same trigger of fight or flight gets you ready for that competition as well. Fight or flight response also helps us to control pain, and you can see how that could be useful in a sporting event. So, here's my picture of the guy in pain. And there was a really interesting study just done a few years ago where they had subjects, and to start with, all of the subjects had to stick their arms in ice water, which is unpleasant, to say the least. It's painful. And so, with their arms there in that ice water, they had to then see how long they could keep their hands in there. And, of course, there's going to be variation between subjects, but they got this baseline for what each subject could handle, and they also then said how much pain they felt like they were in. Then they divided the group into a control and a test group. The control group, again, put their arms in that ice water, and this time they were said, okay, shout a word. And actually what they did was they had them use words to describe a table. So they said things like ground, uh, hard. And so you can imagine then this person's got their hand in that ice water going hard, 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 hard. And not surprisingly, they couldn't actually keep their hands in the ice water any longer on that second try than they could on the first try. So the second try they're shouting and the first try they weren't shouting. Well, then the test group had to put their arms in there and this time they had to shout a swear word. A swear word that they would use if they were in pain, if they dropped something on their foot, I think was what they asked them. And now, so imagine that they're saying shit or fuck, so now they've got their hand in that ice water and they're going, fuck, 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 fuck. And what they found was that now the people could keep their arms in there significantly longer, which is a pretty cool result. Now they found the people who swore more frequently it had less of an effect for them. And they found that it actually had more of an effect for women than for men. And we could speculate that that's because men may swear more frequently than women. The fight or flight response also lets us vent emotions. All right, the monkeys finally stopped, stopped screaming. And we see this in, in all mammals, right? That they vocalize when they're upset about something. And humans, of course, do that as well, right? And so that's also a very common use of taboo words is to vent those emotions, right? Because again, they tap into that limbic system, our emotional brain. So let's go back to the limbic system and I'm gonna go back to this here because I wanna show you this. So here's the amygdala on one side, and then here's the amygdala on the other side. And the amygdala is a very important part of this whole um, landscape of what's going on with swearing. So the amygdala is responsible for processing emotions, especially fight or flight responses. The amygdala links the lower emotional brain to the higher rational brain. And the amygdala also regulates fear-based learning. And this seems to be the really important part here. So I want you to imagine a deer at a drinking hole, right? So the deer is there at the drinking hole getting its drink and it's listening, making sure that, you know, nothing dangerous is going on, and it hears something that stimulates the fight or flight response, and then it sees a wolf coming, running out of the trees, right? So immediately all that adrenaline kicks in, and of course it's going to run away. I mean, a deer is not going to fight the wolf running towards it, but at the same time that all of that's going on, the amygdala starts this learning process. And it's basically taking snapshots 
of everything that's going on, the smells, the sounds, the sights, everything that led up to that moment and follows that moment. And the idea is that this is going to help in the future. So in the future, when those same events happen, those same scents, the same sounds and everything like that, the same sights, you know, the trees moving in that same way, that the deer is going to be that much more prepared when the wolf comes out, right? It learns from it. And the same thing is going on for us, that when we hear swearing, our amygdala is going to stimulate us to start taking a snapshot of everything that's going on to prepare us for future events along these lines, right? So as soon as our uh, fight or flight response kicks in, triggered by the swearing, then our amygdala kicks in as well and starts stimulating us to remember everything that's going on. So because taboo words are deeply associated with emotions, they create a short circuit to the limbic system. And this explains the results of the taboo Stroop test that you took earlier in the semester and that kind of experiment that I had you all do. I'm going to leave that to a discussion question for you to discuss how the amygdala relates to that test that you all conducted.